What happens That's when you get out of the system? You get you get identification papers. You will get a passport, and you'll get a debit card with a uh, with a bottomless pen. That's basically what we're, we're what we're looking forward to. Somewhere mm -hmm. before you get all that, okay, you'll be investigated or basically to uh, talk with to see whether you have the proper understanding uh, into the system, okay? Otherwise, you'll probably get a limited uh, debiting card when you terminate everything. But you've got to be willing to surrender everything over to them so that they can process it and take all the uh, Jezebel banking the UCC banking credits out of the system, close those bonds down and transfer them over to the du jour treasury. Okay, but you need to have your non-UCCs in place. Those registered mail non-UCC. You have to claim ownership over those uh, UCC contract trusts. Then the courts out here cannot basically attack those UCC contracts, trust, which they've been doing constantly. The correct terms for all the courts is basically, I'll spell the word, you can look it up in the dictionary. K-L-E-P-T-O-C-R-A-C-Y. And it means rule by thieves. And that's what all these bar attorneys are, and these judges are. They are thieves, judicial thieves. You never want an attorney, period. Basically, these judges and everything, they never, when you pay your debt, they never release the debt. That's why they hold these things open. Three strikes and you're out. Well, basically, if you paid your debt for the first one, you ought to be able to come up to bat again with no strikes against you. The only way you can become, come down on these judges and these attorneys is by filing a 3949A into the CID or to the local tax uh, uh, commissioner that's at your federal district tax office and a 13909 form. The 13909 form is a tax exemption complaint form that these guys are trying to claim tax exempt status. They're not tax exempt. They're working for a profit and they're stealing, they're thieves. The whole American Bar Association is basically a communist organization of thievery, judicial thievery, working through the uh, bankruptcy court systems. And then all these bar attorneys have control over the government. So that's the government we have right now. But there is the de jure government out there, which has the higher authority, which is still the taxing authority. But you have to do your job in getting your uh, registered mail, non-UCC status, and then put your, uh, submit your surrender or your liquidation order in, because now, with the non-UCC, you're claiming ownership. The state of, the United States, the company, that you have it, the mortgage, the bank, whatever. They are the contractors. You gave them a signature, an autograph, which turned into a signature, a shadow of your autograph. That's what a signature is, is a shadow of your autograph. And basically, you release credits to the contractor to write two bonds, a performance and a payment bond. The two of them together are classified as a fidelity bond. You submit the endorsement, like what I showed you, claiming all bills are bills of credit. There's got to be two sides to every money system. The debt money side is the Federal Reserve dollars. The credit money side is a bill that is classified as a bill of credit to release the credits that are held under contract. 
It's that simple. I don't know how you can make it any simpler than that. I've tried to put examples up there of the two three-sided triangle. House of Cards. It's all a paper money system. House of Cards. Where do I get After the- three years, every mortgage is basically fully funded in credits at the bank. All you have to do is turn around, get the bill from the bank, and endorse it as a bill of credit and send it back to them. If they do not comply, you file a complaint with the attorney general's office, and you also file a complaint with the IRS district office by up to the youth treasury UCC contract trust division, which is also uh, known as the secret service. And the Secret Service is also the CID, which is the contract contractor investigative division. They will investigate the contractor for fraudulent actions. Don't use the courts. You use the tax man. Everything out here is about taxes. Hopefully you guys can understand that. Stay away from all attorneys and all judges. We've tried the last time going to the bankruptcy court. They're not going to do anything because basically they are a communist organization and they basically are anti-American and anti-property ownership. They don't want you to claim ownership of anything. But when you do your non-UCC, register mail non-UCC, you now stand with a 13-digit number and you are the owner, then you can basically operate in the proper system. But you have to understand that performance bond is a high interest bond. Only about 5% or so, but that's still classified as high interest because that's a taxable interest. The payment bond is a low interest bond. It's less than 1% return. So there is no taxes paid on the payment bond. Now they're grouped together and then they're uh, put out in the circulation as a fidelity bond times 10. Basically the performance bond is getting 50% return per year roughly. And the payment bond is getting roughly a 3% return off of the 10 bonds. Your certificate of live birth was a UCC contract trust with the United States Corporation and the state of corporation. They have been using both of those, the performance bond, and then they've never been paying you uh, because you've never been requesting the payments from the payment bond that you're entitled to. All the receipts you get are receipts of credit. You have to group them together and turn around and submit those into the IRS for compensation of the credits to allow them to cancel that much commercial debt from your paying the bill. Learn how the money system really works and stop listening to all these other nitwits out here and people that call themselves judges and whatever. Experts that don't know anything and continually want to go to court and fight something out in a court action, you're going to lose. The court's going to turn around and do thievery against your account anyway when you go into court and file a court case. You're going into a den of thieves. This is our country. It's not the judges or the bar association. They're the interlopers. We need to package them up, put them on a uh, ocean liner and send them out in the middle of the ocean and sink the sucker. They would be classified as Nathan Hale, the man without a country, because no other country wants that many goddamn lawyers and bar members in their country. Non-UCC filings and then put them into the treasury. Like I said, Alexander Hamilton was one of the biggest traders of this country. He established the first commercial bank in this country. 
He established the Department of the Treasury, a derivative, not operating under the de jure Treasury Department, so that basically he could bring in the foreign bankers in with the First National Bank in 1791. Because Congress didn't understand that the Constitution was nothing but a banking charter. The founding fathers knew that, but basically the people that were in Congress and elected, they never fully understood it. Just like all your representatives out here right now, your county supervisors, they don't understand the damn banking system. They're supposed to be your local court. There's your court for the county for settling all bills, but they don't know how to do that. Traffic tickets, you name it. Not these uh, bar association judges. I submitted in this last week, I told you, 11 traffic tickets. They were sent up, sent into the clerk of the court. Basically, she sent them out to the attorney general's office and to the judicial department attorney. I also notified the Secret Service on this. Put in a complaint with the 3949A against uh, the contractor, the state of Iowa. So we'll see what happens this next week. I don't know how long it took for them to leave the clerk of the court's office to get up to those other two offices. But it's a Friday, based Friday afternoon. Uh, I hadn't gotten any contact back from either one of them, but I'm not letting up on it. You have to keep after these guys. You have to notify the inspector generals of the fraud and the identity theft that is taking place by these bar attorneys and the judges by filing service charges in against your performance bonds contractor bonds, just like you had hire a contractor to build a house for you. And his brother-in-law shows up on the job site and talks to his, to the contractor for two hours and then turns around and submits a bill for labor for two hours of labor to get compensated in against the construction contract. And see, that's what's going on in the bankruptcy court. You never see half the bills that are going against the contractors' performance bonds. That's brought by the contractors. You're the owner of these contracts. You can fire that contractor that's building your house anytime you want to. When you establish he is committing a fraud, like I said before, all mortgages are fully the credits are fully in the performance bond at the end of three years. You can order, request a bill from the contractor, the bank, get a full settlement bill from them, endorse it, like the endorsement that I placed up there, for full settlement. You claim all of the residue uh, credits from the performance bond and the payment bond. You get an IRS bill. You accept it as you acknowledge it. You don't accept anything. You acknowledge it that it is a bill of credit. You release the value that that IRS tax bill is from the performance bond that they have out there. And you can also demand uh, another twenty five or fifty thousand dollars from the payment bond. You send that into the IRS. They're now obligated to turn around and send you back the payment bond request that you put in there. That's why some people were able to do the penalty for uh, penalty envelopes or not the penalty envelopes but the uh, five thousand dollar penalty charges they would make it out for $15,000 and they would get turned around and get paid back $10,000. And the payment coming out of the 
payment bond is non-taxable. It's strictly labor. And labor is not to be taxed. It's not a wager. The items coming out of the performance bond is classified as a wagering bill. And that anything coming out of the performance bond is a taxable item because it's operating at a higher interest rate, a taxable interest rate. You do not write your own bonds. The contractors have written the bonds. You just have to know how to operate the bonds that they were written over this UCC contract trust you have. But you have to come in and claim the ownership that you're standing under a 13-digit number, a registered mail number. The misconception going into court is basically you go into court and basically they're classifying you as a UCC person. You're not coming in there claiming a non-UCC person status. And person can be the living individual or a fictional individual. So don't worry about the damn words. Worry about the presumption that they're operating under. You're off coming in there under the presumption of being a UCC person. You've got to come in in the capacity of a non-UCC person. Then you have control over the contract. Everything in these courts is about a contract. The only thing that these attorneys ever study is contract law. They don't know anything else. Do you think they're going to know all 300 million uh, codes of law out here? Shit, no. They'd never get out of college. They don't even know the statute because they never studied them. They never even studied what the Constitution says. And we know damn well that every bar attorney out here and judge is in violation and also the governments out here, commercial governments, UCC governments that we have, are in violation of Article 1, Section 10. By doing a registered mail, non-UCC, now you stand under the protections of the Constitution of the country. And these communist judges and bar attorneys cannot attack a de jour banking system. They can only attack a commercial banking system. That simple. When you understand what's going on. Okay. Any questions? I have a question, Patrick. Okay. My name is Lisa. Um, I, I, um, I'm, I'm a novice in what you're teaching, but I think it's wonderful. I, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I have a court date for uh, July 14th. They, they foreclosed on my home and then arrested me for felony trespassing. And um, I have that court date July 14th. Do, do you have any suggestion for me? Yes, you need to get a registered mail non-UCC filing done. Okay. Send that registered mail back to yourself. Okay. Okay. And mm -hmm. I've got the templates up there showing how to do that. Putting a global stamp on it, and you post the original back to yourself. You run copies of that after you've posted it with the stamp on it, and then you can certify those copies, and then you can submit that into the court that you're the owner of that, and that you are removing this from the court, and you're turning this uh, action over to uh, the Treasury UCC Contract Trust Division. Okay. Because everything in this country is about taxes. Okay? Yes, thank you so much. Patrick? Yeah. Um, I just want to add for the lady that just called in, to, I want to say this, and correct me if I'm wrong, Patrick, do not open the mail when you get it, because that is your sealed record and nobody else is ever going to be able to open that because it's got your name on it and they'll be tampering with the mail. So that makes it your private record. So right. You would that. keep that. And basically then if some 
lawful organization ever wanted to come back and see that you, they would have to have authority to request to see that original document. And at that point in time, you would basically open it in front of some uh, legal authority. But you would be okay. the one to open that document. Okay. They so can't. I would so, Patrick, I would just take the registered mail number, write it on the copies, and send those out certified, correct? You put it on the original document. Okay. Okay. Look at the mm -hmm. templates I have up on eConcurrent.com slash divine or right. the we the people, all one word, underscore shareholder, Yahoo group site. Okay, the we the people, the we. The no, people. just we the people, not the. Oh, we, okay, we, we the, the people. people all one word, mm -hmm. underscore shareholders with an S on the end of it, and okay. that's a Yahoo group. Okay. So you got to be okay. signed up with Yahoo, and then you go into the groups uh, site there for Yahoo, and then you'll search for that we the people site. And then you'll have to sign up to be a member of it. And there's uh, automatic uh, membership sign up when you do that. Tom will send you an introduction, uh, welcome aboard, and uh, a couple other uh, links uh, to uh, certain things, to like the Skype group and a few other things. And then basically uh, you can get into the file section. And uh, the first folder in the file section has... Uh, all of the documents that you would need to look at. Uh, okay. 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 Thank you. Yes. And, I, um, and so what, can I ask you, will the documents for shutting down all my accounts be on there as well? Yes, thank you. And listen to the audio. Okay. Okay. I've been listening all day. <laughs> okay. I've been listening. All thank you, Patrick. Okay. But, You're welcome. And I, I also suggest that you join the Skype group. And the welcome email will tell you exactly how to do that. The welcome email gets sent out every two weeks, and it was sent out this, today, this morning. So everyone should have gotten the copy this morning. It tells you how to get into the Skype group and where the files are and other useful tips for online services to help you with your documents. Okay. Pardon? Thank you, guys. Yes, yes, Patrick, uh, not, not so much a question, but one of the guys in the group said that he received a notice from the bankruptcy court on his bankruptcy 15 case, and what the notice was is that they were sending it up to the chief judge of the region. Of the region. Probably what you're saying is still true. Nothing is probably going to happen with it, but at least that's uh, some uh, mail traffic that occurred. No, I haven't heard anything back on mine. I know damn well, and I'm not going to because they know me too damn well. And basically, they don't want to even talk to me. And uh, basically, one of the other guys got uh, uh, notice from the court there saying that he had to pay $1,750 or something like that for that uh, uh, filing fee. And I told him, just forget it. Uh, don't even go any back to him. Don't respond to him. Just uh, uh, let it drop. Get your other shit out to uh, the IRS Technical Support Division, uh, both at your uh, district IRS office uh, through the district commissioner and also out to Washington, D.C. to uh, uh, the IRS Technical Support Division there and uh, care of the Treasury UCC Contract Trust, Trust Division. Uh, at 1500 Pennsylvania. See, that's what basically the uh, fifth Congress, Session 2, Chapter 49 and 50, basically states that when the courts do not comply, you turn to the Treasury to put all your settlements in, your debtor settlements. And basically, we'll close down all these debtor UCC contract trust that we have out here by way of the Treasury Department for that uh, uh, fifth session, volume one, uh, 
fifth session, chapter two, uh, section two, chapter 49 and 50. It's that simple. See, that was the, that was what Congress turned around and did to combat uh, Alexander Hamilton setting up uh, the first national bank in nineteen or in seventeen ninety one. Now uh, we we can send our postal receipts now to the IRS, not to Richmond anymore. Yeah. No, good. You send them, basically you bottle them up, basically you're coming in there, and you send them into the IRS Technical Support Division at your local uh, office. Uh, and could that include the $300 penalty envelope, or do we still have to lie? I don't know. You can try it and see. Okay, I'll send a couple of notes. I would concentrate first on getting out of the system, terminating all of the others. The receipts, you can always turn over to them when they show up. That's say here, I want this amount of national debt also canceled. Put the okay. credits in the treasury. I don't okay. care how much they are. Basically, just give me the debit card. I'm trying to stay in honor. Now, you honorably give me a debit card from the DeJour Treasury because I have deposited uh, quite a few credits. Okay. So okay. I'm, I'm working on the liquidation first. Thank you. Yes, you guys don't worry about how much is in these accounts. Have it. You do that 926 form and you transfer all those credits those from those UCC contract trusts over to the DeJour Treasury. They will take out their 10% tidying processing fees and put the rest of the credits into the DeJour Treasury after they've properly been converted. Okay? You don't need to worry about what it is. You're going to get a debit card. Now, when you prove yourself that basically you are worthy and understand how the monetary system properly functions, then you will be basically given the appropriate debit card, whether it's a limited debit card or whether it's an unlimited debit card. And then you'll have your passbook savings account, passport, and passport debit card, credit debiting card, for international operations. And basically every state is a nation, so basically that will be your passport even here within the country, going from one nation to another.